Hi, I'm Denise Beaton, Crop Protection Specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. And in this presentation, I'm going to cover some pesticide safety information that scouts need to know before they enter the crops to scout. So to start off, I thought I would get you thinking about pesticide safety. So I have four pictures of different crops here. So pesticides may be applied to various crops. So before you enter any of these fields, which ones do you have to consider potential pesticide exposure? A, corn, B, raspberries, C, pick your own lavender, D, organic crops, E, corn and raspberries, so A and B, or F, all of the above? And the answer is F, all of the above. Most crops are sprayed with pesticides at some point during a growing season. So there are conventional and organic pesticides. Another term that is used for pesticides is pest control products. So you're probably familiar with Roundup herbicide, which contains glyphosate, and that is a conventional pesticide. Some examples of organic pesticides are Dipel, which contains BT, and Pure Spray Green, which is made up mostly of mineral oil. There are also pest control products that contain pheromones, um, which are used in, for mating disruption. As I mentioned, most crops are sprayed with pesticides at some point during the growing season. So when you're going out to scout a field or orchard, err on the side of caution and consider the possibility that the crop you are entering may have been sprayed. Do not enter a field until you have confirmed whether it has been sprayed, what it has been sprayed with, and when it was sprayed, because you want to be able to protect yourself. So just to give you a bit of background on pesticide use in Canada, all products that are applied for pest control must be reviewed and registered by Health Canada's Pest Management Regulatory Agency, the PMRA. So before a pesticide is registered in Canada, Health Canada scientists must first review many scientific studies to ensure that the pesticide can be used safely according to label directions. So these are studies that are on efficacy, residues, plant metabolism, soil dissipation, and occupational exposure, etc. So the product label contains the label directions, and this is based on data that the PMRA has reviewed. The product label outlines how the product can be legally used, and it also specifies safety protocols to minimize worker exposure during and after application. You can be exposed to pesticides if you enter a treated area too soon after an application. So exposure can be oral, dermal, and respiratory. So over time, pesticide residues and vapors dissipate until they no longer pose a risk to workers entering the fields. The length of time required for these residues and vapors to dissipate varies with the product, the rate that was used, the type of work you need to do in the field, and the environmental conditions. So how do you know it is safe to go into the field, orchard, vineyard, greenhouse, whatever crop you are scouting? Through PMRA's evaluation on how the pesticide will be used, they come up with restricted entry intervals, which are the period of time that agricultural workers or anyone else must not do hand labor in treated areas after a pesticide has been applied. So you will find these restricted entry intervals or REIs on the product label. The REI gives time for the pesticide residues to break down to safe levels for work to be done. So what exactly is hand labor? So hand labor tasks involve substantial worker contact with the treated surfaces, such as plants, plant parts, or soil. So I've provided a list of examples of hand labor tasks, which include things like planting, harvesting, thinning, weeding, and scouting. So, because when you are out scouting, you could be touching leaves and flipping them over to see if there's insects on the other side, or you could be brushing up against the crop when you're walking through the field. So it's important for a scout to be aware of the REIs and you only scout after the REI has passed. So REIs can range from zero hours to several days, and they are specific to the product being applied, the crop is that it was applied to, and the post-application task such as scouting, harvesting, etc. You also should be aware that REIs can change over time. The PMRA will reevaluate a pesticide's registration 
and they can change the REI. Also, the grower or sprayer applicator may apply more than one product at a time. So for these tank mixes, you always go with the longest REI. And sometimes you may find an REI you may not find an REI on the product label. And if this is the case, go with a 12 hour restricted entry interval. And as I mentioned earlier, you can find these REIs on the pesticide label. And you can find these Canadian pesticide labels using the PMRA's pesticide label search app or their online tool. And you can search the internet for PMRA label and it will pull up the link. So that's what I did and I'm showing you um, what you will see when you do this. So now I'm going to show you what the PMRA's label search app looks like using my phone. So we're going to select the Canada Pesticide Label app. And this screen shows up. So the grower has told you that copper 53W was applied to his or her or orchard. So let's try typing in the word copper to see what happens. And it pulls up 756 results, so that's quite a bit to filter through. So we'll add the word 53 space W. And then no results are found. So that's one thing, you have to have the spelling exactly right. So in this case, we'll try 53 W without a space and press search. And it brings up two results. So we'll select copper 53 W wettable powder. And, it's, and you can see that there's a registration number as well. You can search by that um, also, um, but quite often you won't know that off the top of your head. It's easier to remember the product name. <laughs> so this screen shows up and then we're gonna select the eyeball and that will pull up the PDF of the label. So it might be a little bit difficult to read on your phone, um, but you can make it bigger if um, you do have difficulties reading it. So I'm going to press the search button at the upper left, and I'm going to try searching for REI. So one of zero shows up, so there's zero pages that have that on there. So I cross it, get out of there, and let's search for the word restricted. So one of one. So Press the forward button, and it takes you to the page where the word restri restricted is found. So in this case, the restricted entry interval is listed under the precautions section at the very end, and it says, do not enter or allow worker entry into treated area during the restricted entry interval of 48 hours. So on some labels, it's, it may not be under the precautions, it may be listed um, where it has the application information like um, for each crop and what rate to use. Um, so you might find it in a column there, um, it'll list the REI. So for the online tool, you need to be able to spell the product name correctly too, just like when you're using the app. So you can also search for the active, active ingredient if you don't know how to spell the product name. So I selected product name from the pull down menu from the initial criteria and I typed in Bazagran. So you need to click on the registration number to pull up the label. The agricultural chemical companies that own the pesticide will also have the product label on their website. So that is another potential place for you to look for the label. The Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs has some various crop protection guides that does include um, REI information. So for horticultural crops, we have the vegetable crop protection guide and for fruit, we have five separate ones um, for the various fruit crops. So we typically update these annually. So REIs can change within that time period. So it's always good to double check um, with the product label. And here's the cover of our, of our new guide to weed control for hort crops. And here's an example from the crop protection guide for apples in the table of products used on apples. So there's a column that shows the REIs and I've um, put a red box around that. So if we look at a sale 70 WP, um, they, there are three different REIs. There's a 12 hour REI for general reentry, a 48 hour for contact and scouting activities, and a six day REI for hand thinning. 
And here's an example from the vegetable crop protection guide. So for malathion soil applications, um, you have a two day or a 24 hour REI, depending on which crop it is. So before you enter a crop, ask the grower or sprayer applicator what was sprayed and when. You need to know this in order to look up the REI because you don't want to enter the treated crop before the REI has ended and it is safe to do so. So you should also let your supervisor know where you will be that day. Um, that's just good practice. And check with your supervisor on any products with special instructions beyond the REI. Also, if for some reason you haven't been able to get the spray records or application information, you should talk to your supervisor about that. So I'm not trying to promote any apps over others, but I wanted to show you some examples of what growers are currently using. So some of our Ontario tomato growers are using the Spray Hub app, which allows the grower to enter spray records and share them immediately with others that they wish to, and that this app will, and this app will inform them on REIs. The What's app is a handy app that lots of people are familiar with, and some farmers are using it to communicate with their workers. So a farmer can put all his or her workers in a group in WhatsApp and quickly notify them of the location sprayed or what will be sprayed that day and the REI. And it's um, cheap and easy to use. So it can happen that when you arrive at the field, the crop has just been sprayed. Miscommunication can occasionally happen. So it's important that you recognize the signs of spraying. So one potential sign of spraying is you can smell a distinct odor because some products do have that. Another sign of spraying is that you can see a sign. Um, so the grower can put up these signs at entry points to the crop so that workers will see that it's not safe to enter that crop yet. Another sign of spraying are tractor spray road tracks. Also, you may even hear the sound of the sprayer nearby. In this case, you should leave the field and talk to, your, talk to the grower or your supervisor. Sometimes you can see residues on leaves, and in this case, the foliage is still wet from the application. However, just because you see residues on leaves doesn't necessarily mean it is pesticide residue. So I, here is a picture of a whitish residue on leaves, and that's from calcium magnesium precipitates in irrigation water. But whenever in doubt, um, leave the field and call the grower to confirm or call your supervisor. So I hope no one encounters pesticide exposure during their scouting, but it is good for you to be informed of what to look for just in case this happens. So potential symptoms of exposure can be headaches, fatigue, irritation of the skin, eyes, nose or throat, loss of appetite, dizziness, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, decreased muscle coordination and blurred vision. So if you feel this way after you've entered the field and you think it could be potential pesticide exposure, you should get medical help immediately. Also a good general practice would be shower at the end of the day. And for pesticide exposure, um, poisonings, there is the Ontario Pesticide Centre that you can call at 1-800-268-9017 or you can call the teletypewriter at 1-877-750-2233. Also you can call 911. Again, I hope nothing like this happens while you're scouting. And if you have any questions and would like to contact me, please email me at denise.beaton at ontario.ca or phone me at 519-400-3636. And thanks for listening and have a safe and fun season scouting our Ontario crops.